You know, when you're trying to figure something out in Excel, maybe how much you need to sell to break even or what price to charge to hit your revenue goal. So you start plugging in different numbers, tweaking one cell, then another cell, then another. You're basically doing what if analysis manually. And let's be honest, it's frustrating and time consuming. And sometimes it feels like you'll never land on the right number. But what if I told you Excel could do all of that for you instantly? Let's start with an easy example and then we'll ramp up to some more advanced scenarios so you can make smarter decisions in seconds. And if you want to follow along, I've got a free practice file linked in the video description that you can download right now. Okay, let's say your 13 year old son wants to save $10,000 to buy a car when they turn 18. They have a part-time job and they can currently afford to save $100 a month in an account that pays 5% interest per annum. We can use the FV function or future value function to calculate how much they'll have after five years. The first argument is the rate, which we divide by 12 to get the monthly rate. Then we want to know the number of savings periods, which is 60 months. Then the payment or savings amount, which is a negative value and he's saving $100 a month. Then the present value, this is zero. That is, he hasn't got any savings yet, so we can skip this argument. And lastly, the type refers to whether the payment is made at the beginning or end of the period. We'll go at zero for end of the period. And let's see, we get a total saved of $6,800.61, which is quite a bit short of the 10 grand target. Now, if he's not going to have enough after 60 months, we can use GoalSeek to quickly figure out how long he'll have to save before he has 10 grand. Let me control R here, just copy this data across. I've got some conditional formatting here that only reveals this title when there's data in this cell. You'll find the Goal Seek tool on the Data tab under What If Analysis and then Goal Seek. Here we need to specify the set cell, that is the cell that I want to contain the 10 grand, the value, that's the 10 grand, and which cell are we changing? The number of savings periods. Now I should point out that this cell can be left empty for Goal Seek to solve but it can't contain a formula. When I click OK, GoalSeek may go through several iterations before it finds the solution. And that was pretty quick. And once it finds the answer, it changes the number of periods value. So we can see it's going to take him roughly 84 months to save 10 grand. But what if they manage to increase their savings by foregoing the latest games each month? I can hear it now. Mom, I'd rather poke myself in the eye than not have the latest game. But mum is persuasive. So let's run another goal seek. Let me copy the calculations across again. And on the data tab, what if analysis goal seek. Again, the set cell is D7. The value is 10 grand. And the cell we're changing is the savings amount. Let's see. So goal seek has found that he needs to save $147.05 every month for five years to meet his target of 10 grand. Looks like he might need a second job. Let's say your son decides he'd rather wait and get a loan for a car when he leaves school and has a full-time job and he wants to spend even more. We won't let that happen, but let's humor him. He's upped his budget to 25 grand and he's found a good deal with just 6% interest rate and a loan term of 36 months. We can use the payment function to calculate what the payment will be each month. The first argument is the rate, again divide by 12. The number of periods is 36 months. The present value is the loan amount, and that's as a negative, so minus 25,000. The next argument is the future value or balance of the loan at the end of the loan period, which for vehicle loans is often called a balloon payment, and it typically represents the estimated value of the car at the end of the loan period. So we've got a balloon payment of 10 grand. And the final argument is whether the payments are made at the beginning or the end of the period. The default is the end of the period, which is fine. So I'll just skip this argument and close parentheses. And we can see the monthly loan payment is going to be $506.33. Now that is way too much. We estimate at best he'll be able to repay $400 a month. Let me control R to copy the data across. And again, we'll use goal seek to figure out how much he can afford to borrow. So the set cell is the monthly payment. The value is 400. And the cell we're going to change is the loan amount. Click OK. And we can see GoalSeek has adjusted the loan down to 21,504.86.
Of course, this may have a knock-on effect to the balloon payment, which we'd need to confirm. By the way, if you're watching this and thinking, wow, I need to get way better at Excel, I highly recommend you take my Excel expert course. It's designed to quickly take you from just knowing Excel to actually using it like a pro. You'll receive a certificate upon completing the course and support from me personally throughout. The link's in the description and pin comment. So far, we've used Goalseek to find the maximum loan amount we can afford with a $400 monthly budget. But what if we want to compare different loan options like a three-year loan versus a five-year loan or different balloon payments? One way to do this is to replicate the calculations with different inputs. But if this calculation is connected to a larger model like a budget, then you'll want to see the overall impact of making those changes without having to recreate the budget for each scenario. In which case, we can use another what-if analysis tool called Scenario Manager. It lets us store and switch between different sets of numbers with one click. You can see my total budget is currently showing a $1,000 loss with the three-year loan and 10,000 balloon payment. So let's compare it to a five-year loan with a $5,000 balloon payment. On the Data tab under What If Analysis, we've got Scenario Manager. Here I want to add my first scenario. We'll just give it a name. This one will be 3 year 10k balloon. And the cells that we're going to change is the term and the balloon payment. Now, if you have non adjacent cells that you want to change, you can just hold Control and select those cells. I'll click OK. Now we specify what those values are. So this is the 3 year term and the 10k balloon, and it's picked up those values from the cells. So I can simply click Add to add the next one. The next scenario name is 5 year 5k balloon. And the cells that we're changing are the same. Click OK. The values this time are 60 and 5000. And I'll click OK. And you can see I've got my two scenarios listed. All I need to do is select them in the list and click Show. It's already showing three years and the 10k balloon. Select the next one and click show. And you can see I can easily toggle between the two scenarios. So with the longer loan term, we can now return a small profit. And if we go back to the three year 10k balloon, we're back to our loss. And of course you can add more scenarios and also look at altering other variables like the loan amount itself. And just like that, instead of manually adjusting numbers and hoping for the best, Excel does all the work for us. But here's the thing, Goalseek is just one of many features that can save you time and frustration. In this video, I reveal seven more hidden Excel gems that most people overlook. So check it out next. You'll wonder how you ever managed without them. I'll see you there.